The man pushed his hand through his rough black hair and took a deep breath, his glasses held together by tape resting on his dirty face. Looking up, his eyes fixed on the grand wooden door in front of him that stood strongly against the wreckage of an old building. His black and red clothes were made up of scraps soon together to create a sturdy armour to protect against the harsh conditions of the shattered world they inhabited. Several pockets and pouches lined his jacket as three bandoliers held a variety of bullets and seemingly homemade weaponry. Clenching his fist tightly around the revolver that resembled nothing more than scrap metals and a few glowing gems joined into the form of a gun, he exhaled. Flicking a switch on the weapon, it jumped to life glowing a bright red and humming as parts of the barrel began to rotate, gaining speed. Pulling up and pointing at the door, he looked down the sights and tightened his grip as the humming and glow continued to build in intensity. A smirk crossed his face as he pulled the trigger, sending a powerful red bolt of light that flew towards the door. Its impact instantly demolished the door, sending large chunks of wood flying back into the room beyond, leaving nothing more than a gaping hole and splinters. Clicking the gun back off and putting it down on its side, well, that was smashing, he smugly states. His met with silence. Oh, come on, man, that was a good one. Five out of ten, a voice responds. Another man gets up from a piece of nearby wreckage. Taller than his friend and dressed primarily in dark blue, his light brown hair frames a longer, sterner face. His long overcoat hides the similar selections of weapons as he carries a large yet sturdy-looking backpack. Picking up a heavier rifle, and pushing himself up as he heads towards the still smoking hole in the dark d in the door and begins to pass through. Stop saying that and hey, don't walk away, wait up, the first man states as he hurriedly tries to put the constructed revolver back into a side holster whilst picking up his own backpack from the floor. Entering the room, he catches up to the man in blue, who is staring off into the distance. You know you could at least try to humour me. Shh. I mean, I'm just trying to make you laugh. It's not that hard to just pretend- Rage, shut up! He shouts as he turns to face him. But why? He moans. Because we're not alone, he adds, before pointing to some tracks in otherwise untouched, untouched dust on the ground. Rage quickly stops moaning before putting his hand to his revolver and pulling it back out. The other man heads over to the tracks and kneels next to them, putting his rifle to a side and running his finger along inside of one of the footprints. Any excuse to pretend to be Batman, Rage mutters under his breath before scanning the room for any other signs of life. The building seems almost completely intact with only a few holes in the high ceiling, letting a thin strips of light and illuminating the otherwise pitch black hall. Thick wooden arches ran along across the roof, slightly fire damaged and sodden but otherwise intact and supporting the weight of the roof. The walls made of large stone blocks and had no obvious way in or out. The only two entrances included the door they'd blown through and one partially obscured by dark at the other end of the room. Where the tracks led, Reg clicked his gun to life as it began to spin and light up, casting a faint red glow over his surrounding area. Hey Hollow, you almost done playing detective over there, he nervously states as his eyes continuously scan the walls around him. Votors. Probably around five, Hollow states, before clicking his gun on. Its blue crystal is at the hilt pulses as it lights up two strips along either side of the barrel before creating a small, constant spark at the end. You ready? Have you seen the colour of my crystal? Rage responds whilst holding up his gun. Hollow looks at him silently. Ready? Red E? You're such a bitch, Hollow sighs as he turns around and begins following the tracks. Walking steadily to the back of the room, they edge closer and closer to the second door, which hasn't fared well over time and lines half collapsed, leaving an easy route in, or in and out of the next room. A room in complete darkness. 